Imposter syndrome is basically when you feel like you're a fraud or you feel like you're not good enough or you feel like you're really out of your comfort zone and you don't know what you're doing and you're out of your depth. Imposter syndrome is this feeling of being an imposter doing something. And this happens for basically everyone the first time they try and do something because we all start somewhere. Hey, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Rochelle Fox. I'm a meditation teacher that is all about helping you raise your vibration. You are currently watching my mind shift series. This is actually video 28 of 51. So if you want to learn something that could change your life and that will definitely shift your vibe, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss another video in this series. <sighs> now that is out of the way, my friends, we are talking about a big subject, something that I feel like isn't spoken about enough. It is a dear friend of mine. It is something that I have dealt with, struggled with, battled with for many years. And it's something that still comes up in my energetic field today. <sighs> that thing is imposter syndrome. Good old imposter syndrome. And I want to talk about imposter syndrome today because not only is it something that I still navigate, it's actually something that I have been navigating recently. And the reason for that is, I just want to let you know, if you didn't know, your girl Rochelle is currently building an app. Yes, I am an app co-founder. I am building a manifestation app and I'm in the final stages of getting it done. And while I've been building this app, I have had imposter syndrome coming up and not for the reasons you would think. And that's why I wanted to speak about it today because if you watch my channel on the regular or if you've just stumbled across my channel, you are someone that wants to go out there and create your dream reality, yeah? You are someone out there like that has big dreams, big goals, like you are an ambitious person. Hit that like button if that is you, affirm it to the universe, I wanna know. That is energetically who I am attracting, what I'm putting out there, and that's what my community is all about. You guys are all go-getters. You want to create your dream life. You want to manifest your dreams. You want to feel happy and healthy and you want to live a life that like you're excited about. And when we're going out there and creating these big dreams and doing these big things, there is this thing called imposter syndrome that can come up. It is something that is very, very common, especially with anyone that is going out there and making anything happen within their life, going outside your comfort zone you will probably experience imposter syndrome. But the thing is, imposter syndrome is something that I feel like is not spoken about enough, really at all. I hardly ever see people speak about it. And I wanna tell you why that is. It is not because you are the only person that is suffering with imposter syndrome, or I'm the only person suffering with imposter syndrome. It is because from a human like psychology point of view, no one wants to go out there and be like, hey, yeah, I have imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is basically when you feel like you're a fraud or you feel like you're not good enough or you feel like you're really out of your comfort zone and you don't know what you're doing and you're out of your depth. Imposter syndrome is this feeling of being an imposter doing something. And this happens for basically everyone the first time they try and do something because we all start somewhere. But people don't wanna go out there and say that they have imposter syndrome because when you're feeling like this, the last thing you want to do is tell people like, hey, I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing because that is like really vulnerable, especially when you see people out there like coaches or teachers or healers or entrepreneurs starting their like first business. No one wants to be like, I have no idea what I'm doing because that feels really scary and we don't want to send that out to the universe. We don't want to kind of out ourselves, but I'm going to out myself right now and say, this is something that I've dealt with for years and it is something that is so normal and if you are dealing with imposter syndrome you are so not alone in this video i'm going to talk about my own experience with imposter syndrome i'm going to talk about some of the mindset tools and techniques that i have used to help me overcome it and i just want to normalize it for you because i think that is the biggest thing with imposter syndrome that we feel like we are the only one out there that feels like an imposter we feel like we're the only one out there feeling like this and you are not the only one out there. <laughs> you are not alone. So firstly, I want to talk about the first time I ever really felt imposter syndrome. The first time I ever really experienced imposter syndrome was when I decided I wanted to become a meditation teacher. The imposter syndrome was insane. It was like, unlike anything I had ever experienced, I had this 
calling, this knowing inside of me that was like, this is what you're meant to do, Rochelle. This is the thing that has had the most impact on your life. This is the thing that you're passionate about. This is the thing that you talk to people about at like random bougie parties when everyone's talking about like celebrities and movies and like all of these cool things and cars and events and people. And I would just be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, cool, cool. Has anyone heard of meditation? I was like this undercover secret spiritual warrior that was just obsessed with these practices. And I would be in these environments where no one was interested in this, but I was like a salesperson for it. I wasn't selling meditation at the time or being a teacher. It wasn't how I was making money. I was just like high on this practice and I wanted to tell everyone about it. But I was really young when it comes to like being a meditation teacher. And when I first wanted to get into this, this was like before Headspace and all of these like apps that had come out and all of this mainstreamness of meditation that's emerged now and all of the popularity around the practice, like that wasn't there when I decided to do this. I was like just one of like the first people that was going out there being like, hey, I, I wanna do this. And I'm like a young person wanting to do this. I was just the first wave of people. It wasn't all over Instagram. It wasn't all, there wasn't TikTok. And and I, I felt like I was just the odd one out and it felt like no one was going to take me seriously. No one was going to believe me. No one was going to trust the young, blonde, Aussie, ex-media girl, presenter, DJ as being a reputable meditation teacher. So I felt like an imposter. I felt like I was going to look like a fraud to other people. I felt like I was going to look like a fake. And in my head, there were two voices. There was this one voice of like deep intuition, this deep soul, heart centered knowing of like, this is your calling, this is your purpose, you need to do this. And on the other hand, there was this loud, roaring, scary, fearful voice of like, what are you doing? Oh my God, back up, just stay looking you know, pretty on camera. No one wants to know what's going on in your brain. This is not what you're meant to do. People always pay you for what you look like, like focus on that. Stop trying to like dig deeper, Rochelle. And what I really had to do and what you need to do is if you're experiencing imposter syndrome is you're experiencing imposter syndrome because you have a deep call. Yeah, you have a deep knowing. You have a deep, deep thing inside you that is telling you to go outside your comfort zone, to go and follow something that is new to you, to go and step into a new version of you. And that new version of you is uncomfortable. That new version of you is scary. That new version of you is the unknown. And all the imposter syndrome is, is it's your ego. It is your protection. It is this kind of scared version of you inside of you that is like, no, we can't do this because we don't, we don't want to risk ourselves. We don't want to like seem like we don't know what we're doing because we really don't know what we're doing because we're new to this. So it's just trying to protect you. And what you've got to do is you've got to focus on the heart centered voice. You've got to focus on the love. You've got to focus on the, the calling and the knowing. And what you've got to do is you've got to beat imposter syndrome by continuously showing up as the version of you that you want to become. So you literally have to start embodying your future self. This is what we all talk about when it comes to manifestation. We're always talking about don't act to be. You need to be that version of yourself. You need to just show up as that version of you. So what I started doing is I just started showing up like I already had meditation clients. I started writing free blog posts called like my happiness posts on my old blog, A Fox at Meows. I'm like, I'm just going to go talk about meditation. I'm going to talk about healing. I'm going to talk about happiness. I'm going to talk about the brain because that's what I'm interested in. And I kept doing that for a few years. And then I formed my company Mindspo. And then now from feeling like a complete imposter, I didn't know like what I was going to do, how I was going to make it happen. If people were going to believe me, if people were going to trust me to now having a thriving community of over a hundred thousand people from all around the world. I have thousands of students that I've taught meditation to. And one of the biggest like compliments I get from my students is, is I love how you teach meditation, Rochelle, because you make it relatable. You make it like digestible for this generation. You made it make sense to me. And if I had listened to that imposter syndrome, if I thought that I had to wait till I was 80 and had the gray hair and had all the wisdom to be able to go and teach the thing that I was passionate about, to go and express my gifts, then I would have held back the life that I have now. I wouldn't have stepped into the version of me that I am and I wouldn't embody my true calling. So what you've got to do is you've got to hear the fear, but you've got to just say, 
fuck it and go and do what you want to do anyway. So that's my first experience of imposter syndrome. And I've had many experiences of imposter syndrome throughout my life since then. But now I want to talk to you about the imposter syndrome I'm experiencing now. So I'm currently building this manifestation app, like I mentioned, and I'm not experiencing imposter syndrome when creating the meditations or doing any of the content. I'm like, this is you know years of my experience. This is years of my knowledge. This is like amazing. I created this app in my mind years ago and now we're finally bringing it into reality and it's so exciting. But the thing that is coming up for me now is business. Like this is serious. This is an app. This is going to be on everyone's phones. Like everyone can instantly access this. So I'm like thinking about all of these like logistical business things. And it feels like I'm playing business, doing business on a bigger scale because it's not just my company doing what I want to do. I'm going to be putting this out to Apple and Google and when you do an app, it's like having a partnership with these big organizations. So there's a lot of tick boxes and a lot of things you need to do and a lot of things you need to organize and a lot of logistics. And I'm just (laughs) kind of in my me doing all my spiritual stuff and living my aligned life. And then I've got to kind of step into this like CEO side of myself that I haven't really been embodying fully. And then this is where this imposter syndrome is coming up now. And what I want to share with you about this is every level of your life is going to have another devil, right? Every level has another devil. I don't know who said that, but it's a great saying. I've been saying it for years. Every level has another devil. So I want you to know that every time you go and step into this new version of yourself, if you have imposter syndrome, if you have that I'm not enough story, this is normal. This is natural. This is just you embodying the next version of you. So when you can start to see imposter syndrome as just something that is going to continuously keep showing up for you every single time you step into a new version of yourself, it doesn't mean that you are a fake or that you're living this like fraud life where you're like always not feeling good enough. It just means that you are someone that is constantly growing. You are constantly evolving. You are constantly stepping into new versions of yourself and you're having to embody those new versions of yourself. And for me, my imposter syndrome is just a little remnant of my I am not good enough story, which is something I have worked on so much in my life. It is something that has been one of my core limiting beliefs that I constantly work through, which is the I'm not good enough story. And I have healed so many aspects of this story. But for me, because I'm always trying to push the limits with business, and always trying to do big things, and I want to go and help as many people as possible, I've accepted that imposter syndrome is going to be a friend. Imposter syndrome is going to be a friend that wants to keep me safe, that wants to keep me small, that wants to protect me, that wants me to be seen in a way that is safe. Because when we put ourselves out there, guys, when we put ourselves out there to the world and we share our gifts and we do things in a big way, it can be really scary for that part of us inside of ourselves that just wants to keep us safe. The part of us that wants to protect us at all times, the part of us that wants to like hold us back from this scary world. There is a, a little girl inside of you that just wants to be safe, that wants to be held, that wants to be protected. And when you're going out there with your big dreams, your big ambitions, that little girl's like, oh my God, what are you doing? <laughs> like, this is how people get canceled. This is how people fail. This is how people lose their money and lose their homes and take too many risks. Like we, we can't do that. We need to just just be safe. But I want you to know that like all you need to do is you need to talk to that little girl, talk to that imposter syndrome and be like, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. I hear all your struggles. I I hear your concerns. I hear what you're worried about. But we've got this. We're going to do this. We're going to get through this together. We're going to make something great. We're going to like absolutely smash it. We're going to create our own reality. We want a big life. Yeah. I always say to myself when I have this voice of fear, like, Rochelle, you want a big life, yeah? And I'm like, yeah. Like, Rochelle, you want to help lots of people? I'm like, yeah. You know, say this to yourself. Like, you want a big life. Answer it, yeah? You want to help lots of people, yeah? You want to have a lot of love, yeah? You want to feel good about what you do in your life, yeah? You want to live your life with no regrets, Yeah? then you're going to have to go outside your comfort zone. Sometimes you're going to have to feel like the imposter. Sometimes you're going to have to do things that feel really uncomfortable, but know that when you keep doing those things and you keep living in your truth and you keep listening to your intuition, that's when the magic's going to happen. And now looking back, like I started, you know, saying at the beginning of this video, when I said I had major imposter syndrome about my meditation, you know, teaching and, and opening that realm of reality, 
I have no imposter syndrome over that anymore. I sit on the internet and post videos hoping that people are going to listen to them. And I talk about the things that I'm passionate about and I share my heart and I attract beautiful students from all around the world that are interested in the topics that I'm interested in. And that happens because I'm living in my truth, because I'm living in my alignment. So if you just keep living in your truth and living in your alignment and living from that place, it doesn't matter what that little voice inside you says. You can just turn the volume down on that and keep showing up as that other version of you anyway. Keep showing up as that version of you that is inside of you that you want to be born, that version of you that you want to embody in the outer world. When you can see it in the inner world and you start embodying it in the outer world, that's when the magic starts to happen. Meditation, of course, helps lots with this. I have lots of programs that can help with this sort of stuff as well, like all my life coaching programs. So check Check those out down below if you need help with this and that extra support from me. But I want to end this video by saying, if you stop listening to that little voice inside of your head that tells you that you can't, and instead you start listening to that little voice inside of your head that says you can, magical things can happen. I want to know what is it that you feel like an imposter doing? What big dream do you have that you want to go out there and live? What is the thing inside of you that you're like scared of doing? Put it down below. I cannot wait to read all of your answers. I love you guys. Always remember you create your own reality. So go and make some magic and I'll see you in the next one. Over and out.